Okay, so in order to clean a telescope mirror, first of all, we've got to remove it from the telescope and there'll be several screws all the way around the base on the outside of the tube, which we can simply remove and then the cell containing the mirror should lift out. And obviously we just got to be a bit careful when we're doing that so we don't catch the edge of the mirror and accidentally chip it. Give it a wiggle left and right until it kind of releases. Slowly lift it up and there we go. So there are those three mirror clips and those just very lightly press on the mirror. They don't really press actually, they just kind of hold it in place. If they're over tightened actually, they can give you astigmatism, they can change the shape of the mirror by pressing too hard on it. And that's commonly known as pinched optics and it can give you triangular stars. So if you ever see triangle stars on an image from a Newtonian telescope, you can quite reasonably guess that the mirror clips were probably a little bit too tight. What we need to do now is undo those clips and get the mirror out. So here we have the mirror removed from the telescope. And first of all, I just want to touch on what the, not literally touch on, but I want to tell you about what the coatings are on a typical modern mirror. So what the reflective stuff is, is a very thin coating of aluminium and to protect it and to make it last much longer, it's got an overcoat of, in this case, it's silicon dioxide Skywatch you use, which is the most hard wearing one out of the two, but the other one that can be used is silicon monoxide. It's still quite delicate, so you've still got to be quite careful, but it does mean that mirrors last a lot longer now than they used to, which is really great. So how do people generally clean mirrors? If you've done a bit of research already, you may have come across people using distilled water and surgical cotton wool. And there's lots of videos about that. There's lots of references on forums and on the internet about that. But there's also one other method that I want to try in the name of science. And that's actually using your fingertips instead of cotton wool. I probably wouldn't do this if I was an engineer or worked in a trade because I'd have all sorts of grit in my fingers. But as I have a nice office job, I feel like I've not got any grit or contaminants in my fingers. So if I wash them really thoroughly to get rid of any grease from my fingers and do that until they kind of start to pucker up a bit, like you've been in the bath for too long, then they become extremely soft, but also quite sensitive. So if you're gently running your fingers across the mirror, in a bath of very diluted dish soap of one part per you know tub full of water and you can gently clean the mirror of your fingertips and if you come across a bit of grit you will know to instantly stop is is the benefit of this i believe if you're dragging some cotton wool across the mirror under its own weight you can't feel when you've caught a bit of grit that's going to scratch the mirror my last mirror I cleaned, I, I cleaned using the good old cotton wool method. But in the name of science, I do want to try something a bit different and see how it turns out. So I'll, I'll run you through those steps in a moment. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, I mean, I've already done this quite well. I've cleaned the bowl really well and the sink area to get rid of anything that could damage the mirror. But I'll just quickly do it once more just to be sure. With a soft sponge cleaning the bowl that you're going to be using to soak the mirror and at this point I'm going to thoroughly clean my hands to get any oils out. I'm also going to remove my wedding ring at this point as well because I definitely don't want that scratch in the mirror. I'm glad I remembered that. That would have been a bit of a dumb mistake. So give your hands a good scrub like you're going into surgery. Get rid of those greases. Allow them to pucker up a bit. Uh, 
and I'm just going to repeat that to be sure. So what I'm using is warm water, plenty of soap for this bit. loads of times so I'll just get rid of all that soap. At this point I'm going to put a microfiber cloth in the bottom. Give that a rinse out as well, make sure that's clean. I'll put that across the bottom just to help further protect the mirror. Try and get it nice and warm but not too hot and just one tiny drop of soap, dish soap. Now I've moved the tap over the drainer and at this point I'm just going to rinse the mirror. Not into the bowl I'm using. We're going to, in the final stage of cleaning the mirror, we're going to use distilled water. Actually, in my case, I'm going to be using reverse osmosis water, which isn't quite as good. But I also wanted to do a bit of an experiment and see how well reverse osmosis water works. Now, distilled water is super pure. Reverse osmosis water has been purified a lot but it's not quite as pure. So I just want to see what the difference will be there. So there's two new things we're doing here. I'm using reverse osmosis water to see if that leaves any streaks on the mirror. And I'm also using my fingertips to clean the mirror instead of the cotton wool. So I'm just going to agitate the mirror in the very slightly soapy water. that's on there. We've gone down the sink now, so I'm going to fill the bowl back up with some warm water again. Again, just one, one drop. Well, there's two drops there, but never mind. You've got to be careful you don't slip with the mirror at this point. It can become quite slippy. So my fingertips are very clean at this point and the skin's becoming quite soft from all the washing. So at this point I'm going to try this new method. Well it's not new probably but one that's not done that often I don't think compared to the cotton wool and I'm just going to sort of lightly run my fingers across the mirror. Get off any stubborn deposits. If this all goes terribly wrong, it's not like I'm using an expensive Zambuto mirror, so I'll do it for science. I can feel something there actually. I could actually feel something instantly there. I don't know a little feel of that. That? Seems to have gone now anyway, whatever it was. I think this is where the silicon dioxide overcoat plays its major part with the cleaning because obviously it can, well, According to what people say, it can handle this kind of treatment. There's definitely something I can definitely feel my fingertips. 
There's something there, but I can't see anything. Can't see. Everything else feels lovely and smooth. So, is it just a very slight bit of... It's what you can get. I mean, this has been stored in an observatory for a year. And it, the telescope's an open truss design, although I have had a light shroud on it. But you get like spider poop, pollen, all sorts of things sticking to your mirror. So some of these deposits need a little bit more work to get off. Oh yeah, that's come off now, whatever that was. But if I can kind of see, well, I won't talk too soon because the mirror could look terrible at the end of this, but if everything plays out, I've already kind of witnessed the benefit of using very fully washed fingers because if I was dragging cotton wool over that, I never would have noticed that. But I was able to find something, a bit of debris, and just very gently sort of like ease it off and it's gone now but that would have definitely remained if I was just dragging cotton wool over the mirror. I think at this point I'm going to give it one last rinse with tap water. And then I'm going to break out my reverse osmosis water. I want to lean this somewhere. It'd be good if I had a second person, really. Because this is a big tub of water that I've got to try and pour on it whilst I'm holding the mirror. Okay, let's go for it. Let's do this. Generously pour your distilled water, or in this case reverse osmosis water, over the mirror. And then, what we're going to do is let it dry at an angle on the draining board with another microfiber cloth protecting it. I think it needs a bit more cleaning. I can still see some of that frosty stuff that kind of made me want to clean it in the first place. I'm going to repeat that, I think. Let's pop a tiny bit more dish soap in. Hair dryer next. A lot of people would dab the mirror with maybe a Kleenex or a microfiber cloth to get rid of the remaining drops that don't roll off at that steep angle. But I'm going to use a hair dryer. But I wouldn't do that if this wasn't a regularly used hair dryer. If you've not used your hair dryer for six months, it's probably going to be full of dust and you'll just blow that dust onto your freshly clean mirror. But I'm going to run this hair dryer for a minute not pointing at the mirror and then I'm going to point it at the mirror because I, I can be fairly sure after running this for 60 seconds that it would have cleared it out nice and good. Okay so the next thing to do of course is to examine the mirror and see if your handiwork's actually done the trick. It's a little bit nerve-wracking because obviously I've not used the most common method to do this but it's looking good so far from a distance. Let's get it set up so you can see exactly how it looks. That is looking 99% better. It's still a tiny mark at the 3 o'clock position which must be some kind of sap or something. 
that this wasn't going to come off. It's only a millimeter across and I could see that all the time from quite early on from owning the telescope. I think it's just probably a bit of pollen or sap that's uh, landed on the mirror. It's not going anywhere. But the rest of it looks absolutely mint. You can actually see that tiny bit at three o'clock there, sort of halfway towards the middle. There's a tiny light mark. That's not coming off. That is basically some kind of gluey type substance that's, <laughs> that's always going to live there. But the rest of it is completely streak free. So the reverse osmosis water was fine. And no streaks, really shiny. There I am. Hello. You can see the phone that's filming this really clearly. Yeah, that looks really good. So from what I can, I mean, I will shine a light through the back of the torch, back of the torch. I will shine a light through the back of the mirror just to make sure that the coatings aren't damaged, but it's looking really promising that technique. So you might not need the surgical cotton wool after all. Your uh, thoroughly washed fingertips, if you're not an engineer or tradesperson with uh, bits of wood splinters or metal stuck in your fingers, this might be a good idea, but obviously remember to take off any rings or anything like that. Okay, we'll put it all back together after I've uh, shone a light through the back of it to make sure the coatings are okay. So now we need to get the mirror back in the cell with popping on the mirror clips, but we don't want to do those too tight because that will cause the optics to get pinched. A test to make sure you're not doing them too tight is to get a bit of paper and then just make sure you can fit that underneath the mirror clips. So we've got a way to go with that one. So we'll just tighten up a bit more and then retest with the paper. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other two mirror clips. Test it with a bit of paper, heat tightening until it only just fits underneath then we can be sure that the clips are just holding the mirror in place without pressing down on the mirror. Once I'm sure of that, I'll reassemble it and we can just do up the screws around the outside of the tube, securing the mirror in the mirror cell to the optical tube. And then just the final thing will be the collimation. Okie dokie, so all that remains now is to collimate the telescope and we can go out and check it. I've already done a video about collimating a Newtonian using a laser collimator, so I'll pop a card up in the corner for that final stage. Uh, th uh, this video's been long enough now. <laughs> I'm not going to collimate it in this video as well as everything else. But yeah, I think it worked using the finger technique and uh, the the uh, reverse osmosis water seemed to leave it streak free just like distilled water did last time I did it using the cotton wool distilled water method. So yeah, that just kind of opens up a few more possibilities and as said I hadn't seen another video with someone doing the, the finger technique that everyone's doing the cotton wool technique on the videos. So I thought it's, it's a different approach and it, it appears to have paid off. I'll know for sure when I test it, but certainly when we look at the mirror, hopefully nothing has changed in the last five minutes, that looks absolutely pristine. I'll tilt it at some different angles, see if you can get a look at that. I don't know if I can do a side by side before and after, but that is so much nicer. If you made it this far through the video, well done, I know it's been quite a long video. Uh, thanks just so much for supporting the channel, really means a lot and hopefully I'll see you guys on the next video. Okay, take care now.